If you have always wanted to see your ideas come to life in a book, but had no idea how to do it, you're in the right place because today I'm gonna to talk about how I've self-published four books and how you can do the same. Hi, I'm Katie and my business partner Alana and I are on a mission to help other artists like us make more money from their art. All right, let's talk about self-publishing. So first of all, what does that mean? Well, it's pretty straightforward. Self-publishing really just means you're putting your book out into the world on your own without the help of a publisher such as Penguin Random House or HarperCollins, and you are funding it and distributing it yourself. Personally, I've chosen self-publishing for several reasons. Number one, you don't have to wait on anyone or depend on anyone to get your book out there. Number two, you get a way higher profit margin per book than you would with a publisher. And number three, I had a pretty solid following already and I knew they wanted to buy the book. But there are obstacles with self-publishing too, such as, number one, you have to pay for all costs, including anything related to creating your book, printing your book, marketing your book, and distributing your book. Two, you have to find the audience for your book. And there are no guarantees that you'll be able to make your money back or that you'll make a profit. And number three, you have to manage every part of the process from creating the book to editing the book to shipping the book. And that might mean getting some angry customer service emails in your inbox about shipping that you had absolutely no control over. Bing. Then that sound fun. Mmm, sassy emails. Let's address one of the biggest hurdles that people face when they're self-publishing, funding the book. A really popular way to handle this and the way I chose for my first book is Kickstarter. For context, I had been running a passion project called The Monster Project for a couple years before I did my Kickstarter. And this project asks kids to draw monsters and then professional illustrators from all over the world reimagine those monsters in their own styles. The goal is to help kids understand the power of their imaginations and to get them excited about their own creative potential. The project had really caught on. I had a lot of press and a lot of viral sharing of the project. So I felt pretty confident that I could put out a Kickstarter and try to raise $20,000. I planned for part of that money to go into funding the project itself and part to go into creating the monster activity book. After a pretty stressful month, I did hit my goal of 20K, but if you know anything about Kickstarters, you've probably heard that the amount that you actually net in the end is a lot different than the goal number that you hit. So first, Kickstarter takes their fee, and then you have to fulfill all the rewards that people pledged for, and you have to create those things, and then you have to ship those things, and then there are taxes on top of that. So if you do decide to go this Kickstarter self-publishing route, awesome, just make sure that you are working with those numbers in a spreadsheet to make sure everything makes total sense. So here's the first book I created. It's a really cute little activity book and it's got a lot of coloring pages and activities and adventures that are all monster related. Uh, and I wrote the, a little story that goes in here and had um, other illustrators from my project contribute. And it's really fun. Another option for funding, which I used for the following three books that I self-published, is taking pre-orders. I decided to start creating art books after that initial activity book came out that collects some of the coolest monster collaborations from over the years. At that point, I had a pretty solid following on Instagram, and I felt pretty confident I could do it on my own without Kickstarter taking its cut. But I really wanted to be sure, so the first time that I did this, I decided to take pre-orders and say, hey, if I get to X amount of orders, I'm gonna go ahead and print the book, and if I don't get to that amount, then I'm not gonna print the book, but you'll get a refund. And luckily, I did hit that number, and so I made the book. In addition to that pre-order money, I added some of the Kickstarter money that was left over to print the book. There are so many other options for funding out there if you just get creative, or you can even consider something like print on demand. You can look at something like blurb books where they only print a book when somebody buys the book. Uh, that can be an option, but just know that your profit margins on that model are going to be way, way, way lower than if you print the books yourself and hold inventory, but that might just make the most sense for you. You can also consider only offering your book digitally, which means you spend zero money printing and shipping your book. 
Now, let's assume that your book is funded. Yay! So what do you do now? Well, obviously, you need to get some stuff on the pages. And I'm not going to talk extensively about creating the content in this video, so let's just assume you've got that all ironed out. P.S. It is a great idea to hire an editor and send your book to every friend and family member that you can think of so they can check over your book, look at every potential spelling or grammar mistake, because once you send that book to print, whew, those mistakes will haunt you. Now, if you're physically printing your book, you're going to want to start conversations with your printer as early as possible. That's because printing costs or limitations might have some bearing on the number of pages that are going to be in your book, the size of your book, the color range that you're going to be able to print. Um, all of these things can change depending on what you're able to work out with your printer. You'll also need to work with your printer to get certain print specs, such as the size of the spine of your book, so that you can create the right files. Now, let's talk about ISBNs. An ISBN is an international standard book number, and you're going to need one of these if you ever want your book to be sold in stores, in person or online. So the ISBN is not a barcode, it's the product number. The barcode is actually a separate thing that you also have to get and you put that on the back of your book so that it can be scanned. How do you get an ISBN and a barcode? It's really simple, but both things together generally cost about $150. Just head over to bowker.com, B-O-W-K-E-R, and you can get your ISBN and your barcode. They're the only official ISBN distributors in the US, so that's where you need to go. Once your book is printed, it is time to fulfill any outstanding pre-orders and to start marketing to get some more orders. If you're fulfilling the orders yourself, which you probably are, I recommend signing up for ShipStation. ShipStation is an app that helps you organize all your orders and print all the postage from home. I also recommend investing in a handy little label printer. It will save your life. This is not sponsored. I just really like this label printer. I generally ship my books in padded envelopes via USPS, and once I've printed all the postage and put it on the parcels, I don't think I've ever used the word parcel. What was I saying? I will head over to the USPS website and schedule an at-home pickup, which is totally free. When it comes to marketing your book and making sales, remember that with self-publishing, this part is totally up to you. There's no one there to kind of help you and hold your hand. You have to go out there, you have to hustle, you have to do the salesy things. And if that just doesn't sound like your cup of tea, then maybe self-publishing isn't the right route for you. If you are interested in learning a lot more about self-publishing and working with a publisher, make sure you're signed up for our newsletter because we have so much more good stuff about publishing coming out really soon. Just head over to our website, which is lumier.co, scroll to the bottom footer and put your name in there so you don't miss anything. And also, don't forget to subscribe. We are artists who mean business and we are in this with you. See you in the next video.